Victor Crouch is an apprentice jockey based with Gary Moore. Having started out in the pony racing world, he is now progressing up the ranks and is catching the eye of many trainers. With 14 winners to his name in 2015, Hector has bigger plans for 2016. Martin Kelly went to the Moors West Sussex Yards to find out more. Well, Hector, you've been out riding here this morning for Gary. How long have you been working here and how did your association with the yard come about? Um, I've been working here part-time and full-time now for about five years and uh, three years of my licence, so a, a long time. Um, I came here when I was 14, straight out of uh, just pony racing, really. Just wanted to learn a bit more about racing, race horses, so, so I came here. And how did you make the approach? Have you got, did you know Gary before or know the family or what, what was the initial connection? Um, I used to work breaking and pre-training with someone who sends horses here to Gary, Justin Morgan. He used to be an amateur rider and he got in contact with Gary for me. So horses and you have been around together from quite an early stage in your life, have they? Yeah, since before I can remember really. I've, I've always ridden horses and always had horses, so long time. And is that from a family background? Were you, your parents involved or anything? Uh, my mum. My mum has always had horses and she had a mare when I was, before I was born, so I learned to ride from her. So you probably learned to ride a horse before you learned to ride a bike, did you? I, th I think that was the <laughs> case, yeah. <laughs> and you went pony racing. Talk, talk us through that, how, um, how you found that and how successful you were on that circuit. Did you actually ride in the, the pony racing series or anything? Uh, yeah, I rode in all of the series from point to point to pony club to Charles Owen series on the race courses, but um, no success, but a uh, <laughs> good experience, uh, and uh, stands you in good stead. So from what age or from what stage of your life did you think, I want to give it a go and, and become a, a fully-fledged jockey? Um, I don't know, really. It, it kind of came about, I, I really enjoyed pony racing and just wanted to see what, what it was like in racing, really, and uh, just went from there, really. It grew from there. And did you have aspirations to be a jump jockey or a flat jockey, or were you quite open-minded? I was, I was quite open-minded. I quite enjoyed show jumping and hunting and stuff like that, so I, I wasn't too bothered, but I'm quite light, so... The flat was the more obvious option. And growing up, did you enjoy watching racing on TV, be it both jumps or flats? I, I never really, until I was about 13, 14, I didn't really watch too much racing, more Grand National than that. But yeah. It's, yeah, I, I did, did like watching it, yeah. So you say you've been here for, for three or four years. When did you first get your licence and when did you have your, your very first ride on track? Um, I, had, I first got my licence in about April, I think it was almost three years ago now. And I had my first ride in about June. It would be almost three years ago now. So. And where was that? Uh, Kempton, around Kempton. I didn't finish anywhere, but it was a bit of an eye-opener from pony racing. And what was the experience like going racing for the first time as a jockey and even going into the weighing room for the first time? Um, I was quite nervous, to be honest. It was um, all, all new. Even though I'd done the pony racing, it was all different and you know, just... It's, the big time, really. It's, it's the pinnacle, really, from there. And is it quite a daunting thing going into the weighing room when you've got the, the established jockeys, the, the Ryan Moores and the Frankie Tisforis in there? Yeah, it was, because obviously you're, you're, you're no one, really. They don't, they don't know who you are, but obviously they, they're your heroes. You watch them on TV every, every day. They're, they're who you want to be like, so it's pretty nervous. And who's been most helpful to you in that, in that circumstance when you go racing? Which of the jocks give you the time to talk to you and talk through what you're doing? Um, there's, a, there's a good hand for you. If, if I speak to Ryan, he'll, he'll always help me out. And, and just mo almost all of them are very helpful if, if you ask them for, for their help. Yeah. And when you started riding, that initial race, did that just go by in a flash? And did it take you a few races and a bit more experience to, to work out what's actually happening in a race? Yeah, it did. It, it went by very quickly and caught me by surprise, <laughs> really. And it took me, took me quite a while to get used to it, really. And, uh, no, it's, everything seems to slow down when you get, get more used to it and it becomes easier. And what difference is there in the way you ride now to the, the way you rode when you first started out? Uh, There's a, it's a massive difference. I think I'm uh, much more patient now because obviously you, you get in a rush, you start seeing the furlong poles and you start <laughs> getting a rush on, but I like to think I'm quite relaxed now. And if you were to sell yourself to a, a trainer or to an owner who you wanted to ride their horse, mm. what would you say to them? How would you sell yourself as a jockey? Um, I like to think, like I said, I'm quite patient on one, and uh, I always seem to get them quite placed well tactically. So. 
Right. <laughs> and if you were to look at areas that you could improve on, what would you say? Um, always looking to improve everything really, but strength in a finish is, is, a, is a big one. I mean, the, the stronger you are, the more chance you've got of winning, so yeah, that, that's a big one for me. Do you try and model your style on any, any particular jockey? I, I don't try and model myself on anyone because I don't think you can copy someone. You've just got to ride how you ride. And when you, when you do ride, do you come home and watch the videos back and analyse what you've done? Yeah, I always come back and I watch them and I get Josh or Jamie to look through with me if I can't see anything I can improve on and they point stuff out to me that you might not have seen, so always looking to improve. And talking to both Jamie and Josh before doing this today, that they've both been a, a big supporter of yours and said some very nice things about you. How important it and how much encouragement do you get from having people like that having their, their support behind you? It's fantastic because if when, when people like that are giving you help and support, it just boosts your confidence a bit and you believe in yourself a bit more. And obviously they help you out when they're in there with the office at declarations with the <laughs> bus, singing your praises, it does help. And have you been involved with the, the racing school up in Newmarket at all? What, what sort of involvement have you had with them? Um, I've done a couple of courses up there, obviously my licence course and my um, uh, four-week course for stable lads. I did all of those and a couple of pony racing courses. For... And you look back through your, your, your rides and your wins, you've had, what, three so far this year, 14 last year, 11 the year before. Is there one of those that stands out where you look back and think, I was actually pretty good that day or a ride that you were proud of tactically? Um, one that I was very proud of is uh, a horse at Ripon called Polar Forest. I think it was a 17 or 18 runners and he was drawn to 16. Got across from the wide outside over a mile there and just tucked in second, just behind the leader. He, he stuck on game and won. I was, I was quite proud of that. I think that's for Richard Guest. Was yeah, that Richard Guest. Guest yeah. yeah. And you've had rides for, for a lot of trainers, including the likes of uh, Saeed Bin Saru on the, the Godolphin Silks. You've had a, a one for Michael Bell and for, for Marco Botti. Do you, do you get a kick when you get the call coming through the agent saying, oh, you've got one for, for Godolphin? Yeah, it's brilliant. I was, um, I was over the moon when that came through. It's, it's, a, it's a big deal because those are the silks. That, they're world famous, and to be riding in them is, is quite special. So. And who's your agent? Uh, Guy Jewel. And does, does he get most of your rides, or do you find you can often pick up rides just through, through meeting people and association? Um, it, is, it is mainly through um, my agent, but I do, I do ride out twice a week for uh, Amanda Perrett and Henry Candy, so I get a few rides through them. And Henry's another man who's, who's been singing your praise. So tell us about going in there and working with Henry. Uh, he's, um, he's very easy to ride for, Mr Candy. He is, um, he's, he's lovely to ride for, and he's a proper gentleman. And of course, you this winter went across to Dubai. Who were you working for out there? I was uh, working for Satish Seema and uh, his Zabil stables. So fantastic experience. And how did that come about? Um, that came about through uh, the bus and, and through Ryan. Uh, Ryan went over there, I think, in his champion apprentice season, I think 13, 14 years ago. And he um You make he him sound me. old. <laughs> <laughs> he, uh, he got me uh, the job out there. And what did you do while you were out there? Was it a similar experience to working here? What did you manage to learn and what different experiences did you have? It's, it's very different over there to here. They, um, they do a lot of track work and a lot of timing on, on the clock, which I wasn't used to. So that was brilliant to learn. Similar to America, I'd, I'd assume, in the way they do it. So it was, it was good to learn that. And you had rides at, at Maidan during the carnival as well? Yeah, rides at Maidan. That was, that was pretty special as well. It's the world stage, you can't get much bigger than that really, and uh, just to be there was pretty special. And would that be something you're aiming for back over here, with be to running a, a Royal Ascot or a Glorious Goodwood or a, a York? I mean, how much are those big meetings on your mind? Definitely, they, they, they have to be, they're, they're, they're the best meetings around and the best jockeys there, the best trainers, the best horses, you, you want to be there and, and ride in them. And if you look at this season so far, how would you say it's gone? I know we're still quite early on in the campaign, but how's it gone so far? It's been, um, it's been an OK start. And I uh, came back from Dubai. It was quiet for a little while, mm. which you'd expect. I rode a couple of winners quite quickly, but it's, it's quietened down a bit now. Everything's getting into full swing now, and hopefully it'll pick up from there. And how tough is it as an existence, as an apprentice, to, to keep the show on the road every day? Um, it, it is it is quite hard to to keep to keep uh, going every day. You um, 
it's quite hard to get the rides because obviously it's, it's so competitive and if you're not in fashion it's very very tough to get them and you've got to work hard and have a good agent to to keep going and that's something I think this key that you just touched on is, is is the fashionability of a jockey you can just see it just takes that one big Saturday ride for people to notice you yeah. and things can really snowball can't it definitely I mean I think Josephine Gordon's a, the best example for it she rode one winner in four years or something and now she's ridden 42 in, in less than six months so it is it's all it's all about fashion and when you come into fashion you you can fly it's it's funny so you must have a you must need I'd imagine a, a bit of self-belief and determination just to keep your head down and, and, and to keep on kicking waiting for that opportunity to come yeah ex ex that's exactly it. you just got to keep going until you um hopefully you'll get the get the brakes are there particular horses or races you enjoy riding in more do you enjoy a, a big field sprint race or a, a two-mile flat race uh, I always say the favorite best race I've ever ridden in was the uh, Victoria Cup last year uh, best buzz I've ever had riding a race horse so. And why would that be? Why would the Victoria Just, Cup stand there? I was riding a, a good horse, and it was a hold-up horse. It was Hawkeye the New. And um, just running through the field, it was, it was the best. I had a big smile on my face throughout. Uh, can, can you uh, sort of analyse that feeling or compare it with anything else? For, for those of us who don't ride, for people at home who don't ride, try and ex explain that, that feeling to us. No, it's, it's, it's incomparable, really. I've never experienced anything like it doing anything else so it's, like, it's incomparable that's sort of ex that sort of push with an acceleration if you like when you're asking a horse to go yeah. and you're suddenly traveling through yeah it's just, it's it's fantastic it's I, I, I can't really explain it <laughs> <laughs> so what would you say would be a, a target for this year do you set yourself for set yourself targets and, and goals to work towards I do yeah um, I'd love to um, get down to a three pound claim before the end of the year that's 20 winners left on that which is it's, it, it'll be tough but if it's an improvement on last year hopefully it'll uh, hopefully I can do it and you that's, that's the aim and you touched on going up to Red Car I, I presume you'd go anywhere to ride would you oh, definitely I, I went to um, Hamilton last year for, for one for um, Mr Fretwell and Mr Brown it, I, I'd, I'd go anywhere really that's quite a long drive from Brighton uh, yeah, it is a long way. Yeah. <laughs> and in, in, say, in 10 years' time, Hector, where would you like to see yourself? What would be the, the long-term dream? Uh, the long-term dream would obviously be a professional jockey and hopefully travelling the world riding the, the best horses. That would be, that'd be the dream.